Okay. All right, we're on. Hey. Let's see everybody gets the signal and say, hey, we're on. Yeah. We're good. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Hey. All hey. right. Good, good evening. evening. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Thanks for watching. Uh, share with somebody. Share with somebody. We're here. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. It's 7.30. Right. Here we Hi. go. Here we go. We're going. We're moving along. We're moving along. How's everybody's day? Hope everybody's day went well. If your day went well, just say well. It went well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miriam, Lauren, Orville. All hey. right. Good to see you. Lisa. There you go. Put see some you know? thumbs up. Put some thumbs up. You All can right. share. There we go. You can put some thumbs up. You can share. Good to be here tonight. Glad it went well. Pray your family's well. Pray your children are well. It's awesome. It's awesome this, to be here tonight, Tuesday night. There you go. Tuesday night. <laughs> be Law Live. There you go. Good to see you guys. Share with somebody. Share with somebody. Sharon is there, Miriam. Good to see you. Yvette, Devin good to see James. You. Good to see you. Maurice. All right. There awesome. You go. Awesome, awesome. Here we are in our little room. We're in our little room. In your study. In my little room. Mm -hmm. Just where I work. Hey, Maurice. Hey. Good to have you with us. All right, 731. Uh, good to see you, everybody that, that's on the line. Hopefully, uh, everybody had a great day today. Um, I know that it's uh, getting more and more restrictions on uh, where we can go, but hopefully that... Um, as I shared today in my little announcement uh, to the body that uh, we're not uh, what I call quarantined to the point where we have mm -hmm. to stay inside and we can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Certainly you can take a walk and hopefully you got some fresh air today after that really intense rainstorm last night. Um, the reason why we're here um, tonight, uh, we talked about doing B-Law Lives because we wanted to uh, do all we can to strengthen the body of Christ and strengthen you particularly those who are abundant lifers during this time where we are not together as much as we could be or like to be. Um, and so I just had, had a thought where, well, let me just share with you what I'm doing to keep my spirit up, keep my spirit strong, um, what I'm doing as your pastor, because really one, one job that I really feel that, it, that, that the scriptures call me to is to, to lead and feed people. And, uh, and of course, well, you might ask, well, how do I figure out what to feed people if I don't know what really is nourishing mm -hmm. and feeding me? So I have to kind of dig a little deep sometimes and say, okay, well, what, how am I staying strong? How am I continually growing? And so um, it's important that you uh, really kind of take in some nourishment during this time because there's a lot of negativity coming out there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, lot of news stories coming out there. There's a lot of things that are happening and so you got to keep your spirit strong. So hopefully this is going to be something uh, that we're going to share tonight to just help you to do that. We're going to be together for about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, two things I talked about last week um, that keep me strong out of the seven. Uh, I talked about the importance of praising God and the mm -hmm. importance of the presence of God. Now tonight, mm -hmm. what I want to just share Ryan, briefly is about prayer mm -hmm. and the prophetic word and how those two inter intersect each other. Now, when I talk about prayer, um, certainly there are all kinds of prayers. There's all kinds of way of praying. We can pray uh, for people, meaning intercede for people. We can do supplication. We can do uh, Thanksgiving prayer. But one one way that I learned to pray, um, and I was taught to pray to pray in for many different people, Bishop Thompson taught me how to pray, mm -hmm. um, about praying the scripture, yes. um, praying the scripture. Uh, when you have, when you have a scripture in, in the, in the Bible that really speaks to you, especially in the Psalms, when mm -hmm. you're reading the Psalms, those are, are really a book of prayers. Yes. Um, 
And the reason why we pray the scripture, because it is called the show word of prophecy. Yes. Um, some of the passages that I just want to just kind of give you as a, a point of reference that um, 2 Timothy chapter 3 is a really good foundation for praying scripture. Yeah. Um, where Paul says that all scripture is inspired mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and is profitable for doctrine, for mm -hmm. proof. Mm -hmm. for correction, for instruction in righteousness, mm -hmm. that the man of God, a woman of God, a person may grow up and might be one to actually be a person that is, is fruitful and productive mm -hmm. in, in God's work. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, if you're going to have longevity in ministry or longevity as a Christian, you have, yeah. to, you have to understand that the scripture, the Bible, is the show with a prophecy. Mm -hmm. And while I, what we're going to talk about um, prophetic words that are given to us by individuals, whether it be prophets or someone prophesying. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no greater prophetic word than the, the word Bible. of God Amen. or the Bible. So true. Um, so true. And, and so if you're really going to be strong, you got to read the Bible. Yes. You, gotta, you have to uh, bathe yourself in scripture. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I, that I want to bring out as a point of reference, when you read the book of Acts, mm -hmm. Um, Acts chapter 4 specifically, mm -hmm. they, they were under such persecution where they were told that they should not preach anymore. The, these, mm -hmm. the, the disciples, they said, look, we don't want you preaching anymore in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, 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 in other words, they were trying to right. shut the church down. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and you'll find that the Bible says that the, the church gathered for prayer. Yes, they did. But what did they pray? When they mm -hmm. started to pray, yeah. they prayed the scripture. Because yes, much of the prayers... Yeah. We're in Psalms chapter two. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even the, the early church prayed the scripture. Yes. Um, so it's so important that when you pray, and maybe you've never tried it before, but you can open up a passage of scripture mm -hmm. and pray it. And pray those scriptures mm -hmm. and pray the Psalms. Like mm -hmm. Psalm twenty three is a very powerful psalm to pray. Yeah. Um, thanking God for being your shepherd. Mm -hmm. Thanking thanking him that you, you don't lack anything. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you can also pray that in that reflection of prayer, mm -hmm. or David, David saying who the Lord is to him, mm -hmm. um, the names of God can be prayed as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're praying scripture, it is so important mm -hmm. to understand the meaning of the scripture, mm -hmm. but also understanding that you can say those prayers to God. Bring yes. those, bring those, yes. those passages that have meaning to you before God. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that you want to just Recognize that the Lord said um, that when we pray, pray the scripture, mm -hmm. it is a word that will never, ever get old. Mm -hmm. Never a word that won't go out of style. That's true. But the Bible says that the word of God will abide forever. That heaven and earth is going to pass away. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. word of God is not going to pass away. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to encourage you. The reason why you want to read your scripture is not just to have a good retention of the word. Right. Just so that you can quote it, but also you you need to be able to speak the word, and, yes. and you got to be able to yes. pray the word, mm -hmm. um, because that is really going to give you your strength, mm -hmm. and that is something that God honors. God will yes. honor a person who speaks His word. Yes. And so, what is the promises of God over your life that mm -hmm. you can find that in the scripture? In the scriptures, yeah. yeah. That's real. That's mm -hmm. that's that validates that you say, oh, I, can, I can put my life on mm -hmm. that passage mm -hmm. of Scripture because that's what God said. Right. Right. That's what God said. Right. Um, when Abraham went out um, and he actually was pursuing a place where the Lord had called him to go, mm -hmm. he, he really based it on what God said because mm -hmm. all the evidence that was before him said it wasn't going to happen. Right. Right. Um, so the Word of God is so key for that. Mm -hmm. And secondly... Uh, when it comes to the prophetic word mm -hmm. that we pray, pray over the prophetic words that you are given. Mm -hmm. um, now, one of the things that is very important to balance it, mm -hmm. um, and here's where I am. I'm, I'm a little bit more balanced in this way that uh, I look for the prophetic word mm -hmm. that someone gives me. Yeah. And I ask the question, yeah. is there yeah. something in the scripture mm -hmm. That they're saying, mm -hmm. so I can at least test it and see if it's if it's even true. Yes, yes. Um, we are called to to try the scripture mm -hmm. to test test the spirit. As mm -hmm. it we're called, we're called to ask the question: Did God really say that? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
And often with times, we just kind of take prophecies and we run with them because right, it sounds right. really good. Mm -hmm. But we should actually weigh it according mm -hmm. to Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so the reference that I want to give you is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 mm -hmm. to 22, uh, that Paul gives a really good understanding um, to the church of what they should be mm -hmm. doing in the last days. And he says, one of the things he says that you shouldn't despise prophecy. Right. Um, prophecies have been very beneficial in giving me, um, as it were, a sign. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you're driving down the road right. and you're kind of looking for where you need to land, you kind of right. look for a sign or, or you look for some type of directional mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. make sure that you're there. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really good mm -hmm. and it's really important that we have um, an understanding of what the Lord is saying and what he has said to us through mm -hmm. his word. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So let's talk about our prophetic words. Okay. Let's let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So why, why don't you just tell them what we do with our prophetic words? Because we get prophetic words, mm -hmm. you get prophetic words. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add anything to mm -hmm. to share with that. Well, I think it's important to. There are some people who do not believe in the prophetic word, and they don't believe in it other than the standpoint of every, or they run to the other extreme where they only live by what a prophet or what prophetic words say. And I think there has to be a balance in between the two. Over the years, we have put together, I have a binder here, and it has a picture of our family over on the top front of the binder. And on the side, you can see here, it says family prophecies. So over the years, prophetic word has been spoken over Bishop, over me, over our sons, over us collectively as a family. And so I put it together in this binder and then each person has a tab. So I started out first with our names. So we, you know, we can go to those places. Sometimes you can, if you're at an amusement park or there are some places you can go to and you can call up your name or you give them your name and they'll tell you what your name means. For those of us that have been through Blessing Generation or have been through any of those kinds of uh, transforming hearts yeah. or any type of those seminars, especially Blessing Generation, there's a time at the end where whoever you're working with takes the time to look up your name. Yeah. And I actually have those name cards here as well. And so the book begins with, who are we and who has God called us to be per the name that's on us? And I have my name card here. So thank you, Lynette, from and um, Pastor Chandler Cleveland and Pastor China from um, F Blessing Generation. But I start with the book in our name. So you see I have my husband's name, my name, and then I have also a deeper definition of each name. What does that mean? And when I pray, and I pray prophetically, then I'm praying over him. So for him, his first name is Lawrence. That means Laurel Crown. And so I pray over that. And then our sons as well. I have their names in here. And so we begin to pray over that. And then when he became a bishop, there was a blessing pronounced over him. So I asked Bishop Brian Green, who did it, I asked him actually for a copy. And so, yes, Crystal, you have yours in your prayer room. Yes, a binder. It's good because then you can see it and you can also protect the word. And then when I'm praying over the word and praying prophetically over what God has said, yep. is my tears saturate, they're hitting the plastic and not the paper, so to speak. And so you see here, I have our son's names, Paul and Mark, and what God has said over them. But then specifically, there are words here. I have a word from July 8, 2009 that was given. Um, if someone gives me a card with a prophetic word over it, I have that here also. Um, and that's here. I have prophetic words from 2011 that emails people have sent. And then also, one of the main things that we like to do is we like to transcribe words. Mm -hmm. So here's a word from March 16, 2003. And some of you might remember the late Jennifer Prescott. She had given a word. Um, and then also our Reverend uh, Kathleen Werner, who was very prophetic. She's given us a word. And so we put the binder. I put this binder together. So at any point in time, and this binder is on the altar in my prayer room. And so when I want to remember or just a time to pray, I can pull this binder and say, God, you said this and looking for this. And I can decree and pray the word and agree with the word yeah. over that. Uh, praise God. There's also Crystal saying she saves her prophetic words in her journal. So I encourage you to get it collectively, to put it in one space, because sometimes we have a piece of paper over here, a piece of paper over yeah. there, but not necessarily in a spot. And so 
Bishop has a tab, and so I, I pray over his words, and then I have a tab, and then Paul and Mark each have a tab. I also even have a definition of prophecy, and what does that mean? And so the, the prophetic word, and this was a prophetic word given by Reverend Kathleen Werner back in 1998. Mm -hmm. um, and prophetic word that God, that prophecy corrects, it comforts, it exhorts, and it judges. And so I looked to make sure that that word does just that. So it reminds me, if I get a gloom and doom word from somebody and there's nothing in there that's comforting me or exhorting me, then I go, oh, you know, where is the comfort? Where is the exhortation? Because com prophetic word is not just to, to beat you up and to say right. you're no good. But God corrects us, but he also loves on us. And he does it in a way that brings us to a place of, of growth. And I, tr I try to keep them in this binder. And as you see, as I've said, some of these words are as old as 1998. Um, and yes, then the transcription of the prophecies. So now, currently, we're all taking our cell phones. And, and if you're not already doing this, when you're in a service and someone wants to pray for you or someone's going to speak a word over you, you should take your cell phone and just look up the recording section. Mm -hmm. And then um, the the, memo. The, by the memo section and then make sure that you are listening to it. And then once you have recorded it, then you can go home and transcribe it on in your own space. And so one of the things we'll do is to make sure uh, Tonya, our church administrator, is saying that she will order binders for people to pick up. If you need a binder, feel, f feel free to check in. Um, at the church, just email info at alckame.org and we'll make sure that you get a binder. But some of you I'm already um, have that. I see a question here. Um, when do you, uh, what do you do when you've seen the prophetic word come to pass? Great question, Crystal. So what I do is when God has accomplished the word, I will then pull out that paper and I'll write the date he's accomplished it. And so I know, and I'll say, thank you, God. I usually say a, a, a prayer of praise. And I thank God for him accomplishing that. And that's why you'll see on my binder here, I have little stickies here. Um, I was actually pulling some prophetic words I still have on my phone up a little earlier. But I have stickies and then things I'm still waiting God for, waiting on God for. I have a, a tab here that tells me this is what I should be praying for right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I know this is God. I'm still believing you for this. This hasn't come to pass yet. I'm believing you for that. And so I can pray. And it allows me to give updates. And sometimes I just update. Like this one has updated goals. So I'm still praying. The, the word is still coming to pass. You're welcome, Crystal. So I try to keep track of this is what the Lord has said. And then also for the church. I have ALC. For Abundant Life Church, I have a section on the words that God has given our church. And so I'm praying over those prophetic words as well. And maybe what we can do is some of those corporate prophecies that we have, we can make those available because maybe those are part of ALC that want to pray and agree with us that you can be praying for what has what God has said. Mm -hmm. Some of you might remember, uh, I want to say maybe sometime last year in a prayer meeting, I put all of the prayers or the prophetic words that God has spoken over our house that haven't come to pass yet on a PowerPoint presentation so that we could pray through, so the intercessors can be praying through. Yep. Yep. And if you're an intercessor, this is a great way to be able to pray and agree with people in prayer is to ask them, what prophetic words, what has God spoken over you? And that if you do have prophetic words, and I encourage you, as Bishop just said, take the time and go through scripture. Because most of the people that I've received a prophetic word for, in fact, I could say all of the people I've received a prophetic word from, mm -hmm. they're so scripturally based as they're prophesying over me. I can hear the scripture. I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, ah. Yeah. And oftentimes it's confirming. It's, it's not a new thing that they're saying. It's confirming or it enlarges something that the Lord has already said. Um, Aja, how can I donate to help support the church who those may need a binder? Good to see you, Aja. So um, one, of the, one of our King's kids back, yes. back in the day raising youth ministry. Yes, youth Hi, ministry. Aja. She's in, hey. she's in Atlanta. So you can, you can just go to the church website and you can, um, on the donate section and just put a memo there about that you want to give towards the binders. A logistical question. How often do you pray over prophet, uh, particular prophecies? God will remind you of a specific word. Um, 
but often I'm not feeling pressing enough. Great question, Jen. So what I've had to learn is to not go by my feelings and that the times when I feel, the time when I really don't feel like it is the time I need to press in. Mm -hmm. And what I do is because the binder is on my altar upstairs, so when I'm up in my prayer room or in my, my, prayer, my prayer room area or my office area, it's right there. And so it reminds me, pick it up, take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, and times, sometimes it could be somebody's preached a word or I heard somebody say something and I'm like, ah, God said something about that. And so then I'll go and visit the prophetic word. I know some people pray daily. I can't say I pray daily, uh, but I do try to pray every week. I do try to pick up my binder at one point in time in my life, I had a prayer schedule. And yep. so Mondays, I prayed for a certain set of people. Tuesdays, I prayed for a certain set of people. And then I would pray for my job and pray for the church. And I, my prayer schedule was by the day. I'm not on that type of a schedule anymore. But I do keep the binder in front of me so that I can pray the word. And then if God gives me a specific word for either my husband or the kids, then I'm, I'm, I'm keeping that word before the Lord. And so I hope that helps, Jen, to answer your question. Um, and I would say, again, attach it to Scripture. and Or should say attach it to Scripture. Make sure that there's a biblical base to the prophetic word and pray that. And sometimes I'll just meditate on a word um, for, a, I'll take a good week or a month, and yep. I'm just meditating on one Scripture. Yep. And so then I can really go deeper into it and go deeper into it. So I'm not just scraping the surface for it. So hopefully, Jen, that helps you. Just want to give you a, a quick scripture mm -hmm. to uh, kind of form formulate the reason why praying mm -hmm. uh, over your prophecies is so important. Uh, it comes from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Uh, let me read it from the Passion Translation because I, I really like um, just how it kind of frames this uh, whole idea of pr uh, praying about your pro prophecies. Um, it says, Timothy, my son, I'm trusting you. This is Paul talking to his son, Timothy. Um, he said, I'm trusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process mm -hmm. of fulfillment in this great work of ministry in keeping with the prophecies spoken over you. Mm -hmm. With this encouragement, use your prophecies yes. as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. Mm -hmm. For there are many who reject these virtues and are now destitute of the true faith. Mm. That, that is a, a, a very powerful scripture of how Paul mm -hmm. really was encouraging Timothy. In fact, it was a sense of urgency mm -hmm. that you pray over your pro the prophecies that were spoken over your life. Mm -hmm. um, because that is what you war with as well, you yes. know. Because you're going to see, yes. um, and, and I can I can attest. You, the Lord will speak a word over your life, mm -hmm. um, and you'll read something from Scripture. You go, yep. there is no way that I see that happen. Mm -hmm. And um, and the enemy of your soul is going to try yeah. to prevent you from even believing that could even happen. Mm -hmm. And so you have to use prayer, mm -hmm. and you have to speak over your life the prophetic word that God has spoken. Yep. over you mm -hmm. through people mm -hmm. um, and, and everybody doesn't have to be a prophet right, um, right. I've met people right. who spoke over my life tell them about were, the time we were in Home Depot oh you tell <laughs> It, it was it was kind of, it was kind of interesting. A guy a guy in the right. Home Depot mm -hmm. came down the aisle and started prophesying over us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was so we were in Home Depot and it was almost closing time, and he we heard this guy praying. I mean, at almost at the top of his lungs in tongues. And we were like, okay, Christian alert, Christian alert. And at first you're thinking like, okay, this guy the might be a off. little out there. You know, who's walking through Home Depot praying in the spirit? But then as we listened, we could hear that this is of God. So we said, uh-oh, he's coming close. And so when he got to us, he was he easily noted and he said, you're a pastor. And yeah, he said, and we're like, how did you know? He said, I know people of God. And he just started prophesying and just started speaking things that Pastor Chandler has spoken into our lives. And we were like, okay, Home Depot, y'all, Home Depot. So for real, God will confirm his word. And he was, he was prophesying and speaking the word of faith. So it was a good, we needed that because we were kind of going through some things with the house. So it was a good, it was a good timing, very good timing for us. A resource I want to help, I want to show to you regarding um, intercession 
specifically prophetic intercession. It's a book by Barbara Went Robel, W E N T R O B L E. It's called Prophetic Intercession. Can you see that? I don't know if you've, I know it's coming prophetic backwards. Intercession. I'm you... sorry that it's coming backwards. Um, but it's Prophetic Intercession. And it's, it's about unlocking the miracles and release the blessings of God. This book really helped me. As you see, I've got different tabs in it. It helped me to get a great definition of prophetic intercession mm -hmm. and to be able to intercede over the prophecies that God has given our family and us as a church and as a ministry. And to watch even over some of you when we've had... Uh, different prophets come to the house, different people come to our church and speak a word. We pray over, even we agree over the words that God has preached and God has spoken over you. And so it, we don't just do this for us. And oftentimes we're praying for you as well. But they give, there's a definition that um, she gives about what prophetic intercession is. And so I just want to leave this with you in our last few moments together here. Um, and she says that the definition is to seek God's presence in order to converse with him. So as we seek his presence, when we're praying prophetically, the goal is the presence of God. It's not just to yeah. just to pray over this word that God has given to us, but we need and want God's presence with us. It's also to meet with God, to stand in the gap and to stand on behalf of others. And then also, as we seek God and we meet him, we hear from him. In this time that we're living in with COVID-19, um, we need to be hearing from God. And we'll get to your question, Orville, what if someone pray over you but not out loud? That's praying in the spirit. We'll get to that. And then also speaking forth the mind and the counsel of God. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're not just saying anything, but we want to speak forth what God is saying. Yes. That's the goal of prophecy yes. is to speak forth what God is saying. Yes. So Orville, your question, what if someone prays over you, but not out loud? Um, that's fine too. If you want to ask them to um, pray out loud, you can, but sometimes some people, they're just praying on your behalf. And that's the goal of an intercessor. They stand in the gap. So mm -hmm. you may or may not always hear what that individual is praying. Right. As long as you trust that they're from God and that they're praying good things over you, you may not always hear what they're saying. Sometimes we just need to talk to God. And sometimes, well, even while my husband's sleeping or when our kids were growing up and they were sleeping, I would pray over them. They wouldn't hear me. I'm just walking in their room praying. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important sometimes to be okay with, sometimes people need to pray right. and sometimes you don't need to hear it. It's you need to hear what God is saying, not necessarily what that individual is standing in the gap and praying over you for. You need to hear from God. So hopefully that answers your question. And I don't know if you want to say anything, Bishop, to Orville. Hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, uh, it, it's when, when it's someone that's going to be prophetically ministering to you, mm -hmm. um, it's important that you do hear, hear what they're saying because mm -hmm. that's the point of it. Yes. You, you, you yes. want to hear what they're saying. Yes. Um, you may not understand all that they're saying, mm -hmm. um, but you need at least be open to hear what they're saying. So yes. that's why we want to tabulate it. We want to we Record want to put it, it yeah. on, a, on some type of mm -hmm. recording device. Mm -hmm. You know, I use my phone quite a bit with yeah. my 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 memo section is filled with prophetic words that were spoken over me by yes. so many different people. Yeah, well. um, and I listen to them. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the reason I listen to them, yes. because it encourages me, especially if you have one of those days where you're just like, okay, this is just totally, absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. The day is, this This is just something that's just right. really not going well. Mm -hmm. And then as you start to go through your prophetic words, you, it encourages you and it lets you know that you're you're actually heading in the right direction mm -hmm. or and, the wrong direction. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and, and actually a, another way with the word that has been recorded, you can pray the recorded word. So for instance, there are words that I can recite that I have prophesied over me either through Pastor Chandler or Pastor Kathleen Verna or even John Eckhart. I can repeat it with them. And so sometimes it's good to even pray the prophetic prayer that's been or prophetic word that's been spoken over you to pray it in your own voice so that you can hear those words and you can hear what the Lord is saying as well. So yes, and I'm glad Bishop brought that point out. For the prophetic word, Orville, yes, you need to hear it. So that prophetic word you need to hear. For the prayers that someone's just praying over you, be okay with you may not always hear everything, but you can pause and ask them 
would you mind if you spoke this out? Because I'd like to record it or I'd like to hear what you're saying. Don't feel bad about asking that. So any, any other question before we, we let you go? Uh, During this time of isolation, it is so critical and crucial to be silent so we can hear from God. Thank you both for your encouragement and lesson. I needed this reminder. Amen, Aja. Glad that... Um, yes, because it's time of isolation. I know working from home, um, it's it's hard because you're glued to a screen all day and different feeling. It it is very different. Different feeling, and some and some some uh, of you that are actually working at home, mm-hmm. um, it's very difficult because your kids are at home. So yeah. how how you start to organize your your spaces? Mm-hmm. People are now home. Right. Different different desires during the day. Yeah, and so uh, if you're getting some work done. Um, and they're working at home with all the things that are going on. Yeah. Kudos, you, yeah. you, you got you, purple hot. Um, because I know how hard it is to work at home when you have a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so even next week, I'm going to talk about uh, purpose and productivity. Good. Um, how, Good. how do we how do we become purposeful and focus in on mm-hmm. um, being effective? At, yes. You know, during this time, I think the downtime can can really be a time where some folks will say, you know, this is kind of a bummer. Um, <laughs> but it really can be a very productive time. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about those things that you really could get done that yeah. you wouldn't be able to get done if the, if it wasn't right. a situation with that left us, you know, to actually settle down into our homes? Yes. Uh, one last question. Should we be prophesying over our kids? Absolutely, Absolutely so. yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. yes. You yes. definitely want to prophetically minister your kids. Mm-hmm. We always speak a word to our kids. Now, here's how we... Whether they we want should, to hear it or not. Right, right. Now, here's how we, we also prophetically minister our kids. Mm-hmm. We, we don't use King James language. Yes. Yeah. If you lose King James language, they're gonna think you're crazy. Yes, because oh, you don't have to. Stop. You don't have to shake and quake mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. do the thing. Okay, I feel a prophecy coming on. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll sit in a sit in a very um, just a relaxed yep. area. We're sitting. We're sitting down at the kitchen table drinking tea, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or we're standing mm-hmm. up, just kind of hanging out and talking. And uh, we'll we'll just say here here here's here's what I sense. Here's what I sense God saying. Yeah. 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 Here's what I sense God saying. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say, "Thus saith the Lord," right. you know, coming down like the you know tablets of stone. Right. It's like, Here, here's what I sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to ask you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even as simple as part of the prophecy we did over our kids growing up was saying, "You're going to college." Mark was sitting in his high chair eating Cheerios. I'm going to college. He didn't know what college was. Paul was like, I'm going to college. Walking around telling people at two and four years old, they're going to college. They didn't know what it was. We were speaking over them what they were going to do. Um, So yes, you should be prophesying over your kids. Definitely, definitely. And if you need help with that, um, we can even put some resources together to help you to do that. But again, you don't want to sound like the 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 gloom and doom or the mystery the um, mystery prophet, as it were. You want to be speaking life into your children, definitely. And people people that you meet also, they look for the Lord to use you prophetically. Yes. Um, you know, sometimes we'll, the Lord will use us prophetically as we're sitting in a restaurant, we're talking to a a, a person who's who's uh, serving or a mm-hmm. person who's, mm-hmm. you know, that we see, we just ask a question and the Lord will just say, well, we'll, we'll just share with them right. a word. Be obedient. And it doesn't have to be churchy. You can just, mm-hmm. just say, hey, I, I feel I feel like I want to, I, I, I need to encourage you with, with something that I want to just share with you. Mm-hmm. And Miriam, thank you for your, um, your statement about feeling really prepared for this time, all the sermons on rest and Sabbath in the last few years and months and weeks. Who knew we would be in this season? And yes, God has been preparing us. Churches who've been speaking the word and been speaking those things have been in the, definitely in that space. So thank you for that, uh, that word of encouragement even towards us. That definitely Bishop was hearing from God and the team at ALC hearing from God. Uh, Wilson, you had a question. What if you get a prophetic word for someone, but they don't receive it, things from you? Maybe because of how they feel about, I'm trying to see the rest of it, Wilson. But if someone doesn't receive a prophetic word from you, um, um, you, maybe because of how they feel about you. Yeah, sometimes people, Bishop you, shaking you, his head. You, you can't, you're, I kind of look at it this way. Um when you're sharing when you're sharing a word with somebody mm-hmm. you you have to understand that people who don't receive the word for many different reasons That's true um 
sometimes they won't receive the word because it's coming from a person who they don't that think yeah. should be speaking to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 you know, I told my, to my wife, you know, mm-hmm. when she, when the Lord uses her in prophecy, some people, some guys don't want to see receive it because she's a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying, you're, you're, I'm saying it has nothing to do with her being a woman. Right, right. You, you don't need to judge the, the, the person who's delivering the mail. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not trying to judge the person who delivers my mail. That, yeah. that If my name is on it, then my name is on it. Right, right, um, right. But if they don't receive it, you know, you, you're, that's not your, your, your fault. But that's you right. need to just be um, concerned about um, the delivery mm-hmm. uh, as, you, as the Lord will cause you to. I'll call you to deliver that word that you yep. want to share it with grace. You want to share it with love. You want yes. to share. You want to share it in a way yep. that they can receive it. But if they just say, "You know, I'm not receiving it," that's you're that's not on you. You don't own that. You're a messenger. You don't own that. You, I, and I, as my husband, as Bishop just said, I, I've had to learn over the years. I can't control whether people receive it or not. Um, I can. I'm a messenger. I say what I'm supposed to say. And then I, I leave it there and I pray. And that's the that's the space of prophetic intercession where you get to pray. And some people that I know they can't hear a prophetic word, I'll just say, do you mind if I pray for you? And I'll pray it. I won't thus say it the Lord. I will pray and say, Lord, would you help my sister this? Or would you help my brother that? And Lord, you see the need for this. And I pray it I because I, I, I know they can't hear it. I work in circles with some people, they don't even believe in prophecy. They don't. They don't believe that that still that gift still operates, and that that office still operates. So I can't come in there and say, "Here's a word of the Lord from you," uh, uh, for you. I just pray, and I and if they when at the end of our meetings or the beginning of our meetings, and I sense the Lord wants to do sure. something, I will volunteer. Do you mind if I pray? Mm-hmm. And then I pray it, and and nine times out of ten, the same person who didn't want to receive it or didn't want to hear it. They're kind of, they just nod or I can see that God is addressing them and I'll have the Nicodemus side by meeting with them and they'll say, how did you know that? I'm like, well, it's God. Um, but, and then, but I've also had some people say, I, I don't want to hear that or I don't receive it. I'm like, yeah. well, that's your decision. I don't take that personally. I don't take it personally. All I'm supposed to do is give the word. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to receive it. That's between you and God. So leave it between them and God. Hopefully that helps okay. you, Wizzy. Good. We're about three minutes over our time, and um, I, I see a few questions down here. Wow. Well, well, a good statement. Crystal, yes, Praying Circles Over Your Children, Mark Batterson. That is an awesome book, The Prayer Circles. It's the awesome book. That's another one we'll link it to. Um, as I see it'll be linked on our website because you can even get other people to connect with you and pray um, and, and to be praying together. Hey, Lynette, good to see you. Um, yeah, we. This is a season of prayer. We we've got to be praying as a people. We we have got to be praying. Yes, Valentino, good to see you. As so well. thank you all for tuning in. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week we'll talk about productivity. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about purpose and productivity. Mm-hmm. Um, but also here's something I just want to throw out to you. Mm-hmm. Um, how many of you would like to do something called online Bible study or online book? Okay, kind of, we we call book it a book club. club. Yep. It was a book club, not a Bible study. Mm-hmm. Book club. Yeah. Um, not Bible study. Book, book club. clubs. Book clubs. Book clubs online. Book clubs online. Yeah. Um, I I really want to go through that book, uh, this, on discipleship by Tony Evans. Kingdom. I really want to go through Kingdom Discipleship. Yes. Uh, because that is a book that I um told you to read and mm-hmm. kind of help mm-hmm. help you kind of get a hold of that early, mm-hmm. uh, in the year. But we never did anything with it. And so now that we're all kind of what I call the old time folks will say, shut in. Yes. We need to kind of do some book club. Just mm-hmm. kind of talk about some chapters, mm-hmm. get discipleship down. I think it's a good read. So if, if you're for that, we, I'd like to do that. Yes. Thumbs up. Thumbs yes. up. Yes. Hey, Bet. Let's do it. All thumbs right. up. Hey, thumbs up. Rose. Yes, Betsy. Yes. All right. Book club, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. We can still continue to grow spiritually and grow together. This online is a vehicle that God has blessed us with, so let's use it for his glory. We'll build a platform so we can hear you talk, hear you mm-hmm. chat, you know, and, and I think it'll be a fun thing. And, and if nothing really really works that well, at least we tried it. But I, <laughs> but I want to try it. I want to do a book club. I like reading books, and I can introduce a lot of good material 
so that you can really nurture your life, nurture yourself, and also pass it on to other people yes. so they can grow. Yes. All right? Amen. So, cool. All Thank right. you, everybody. And uh, until... Yes, you can, Karen. You can join. Peace of God be unto you all. Stay in the peace of God in this season. Let the peace of God, let it rule your heart and your mind. We speak sweet rest to everybody that your your sleep tonight would be restful and that you would be replenished and renewed in the strength of the Lord. God bless you all. Take care now. Bye-bye. Love Bye. you. Bye. Love you.